Okay, today <coughs> we'll be discussing about the bulkheads. Before we going in, uh, go to that topic of bulkheads, uh, let me tell you a few words about floors, which we started yesterday, but possibly could not uh, complete everything regarding floors. That floor, what I was telling you, it's a structural member in the transverse plane. This particular member, as you can see, this particular member means if I hatch it, it would look something like this. The part which is hatched in blue, there is a plate in the transverse plane, right? This is referred to as floor. This is referred to as floor. So these floors we have, like in this figure you can see in the profile, this is a profile of a ship. This double line is the inner bottom plating. That means we have the double bottom running all along the length of the ship, right? In the double bottom, one of the important structural member is this floor, right? So what I have tried to show you here is some green lines, some reddish lines and some blue lines, right? Why? Just to distinguish on the type of the floors. There are within the double bottom, this particular spacing as you can see the two lines we have drawn, this space, this is what is referred to as frame space. One of the basic thing that we are talking about stiffeners, we are talking about stiffening arrangement, right? That uh, entire thing depends on where you are going to put the stiffeners, right? Now, unless you have a frame of reference, you cannot put it. That means that uh, you'll have to have, unless a particular frame of reference is fixed, the next item putting it or aligning it will be difficult, right? So that frame of reference, essential frame of reference is the frame spacing. That means a particular spacing we decide before the, before we go about uh, designing the whole structure. That is what is called frame spacing. Means what will be the spacing between the stiffeners, right? Primary spacing. Anyway, so what do we see that at every frame space there will be some kind of floor some kind of transverse member. This floor is a transverse member. That means it's it's in the transverse plane. We have three types of floor. One is referred to as plate floor. Also, also it is called as solid floor, right? There is another type which is bracket floor and then there is a watertight floor. So, if we refer to this uh, profile, we will see the floors with this particular color somewhat radius black that is actually plate floors. The green ones I have mentioned as there is the bracket floor and the blue ones are the watertight floor. Obviously, the floor below the bulkhead will be watertight because the whole purpose of these bulkheads, these are the bulkheads and and what bulkhead that the subdivision bulkheads they are subdividing the entire hull in several watertight compartments so below that the floor what is coming should be a watertight one otherwise you cannot really make two watertight compartments right so obviously the floors below the subdivision bulkhead will be watertight and in between these two watertight floors you will have a combination of plate floor as well as bracket floor. So, what I have shown here is as if the third floor is a plate floor, right? So, what happens? These are all cargo holds. This is hold number 1, hold number 2, hold number 3. Whereas, in engine room I have shown that all with that same color means indicating all plate floors, right? Generally, in the engine room, all the floors are plate floors. 
why all floors are plate floors because they are much more concentrated load comes right heavy machinery is main engine are there so we need a more rigid structure whereas in the cargo holds there is no concentrated load as such distributed load right so you can have a little lighter structure and thereby we have at intervals plate floors rest are bracket floors what are the intervals intervals are just a i mean the spacing of plate floor if it is capital s that is generally taken as 3 to 4 frame space s is the frame spacing small s 3 to 4 frame space that means as if every third or fourth frame will be a plate floor right this S frame spacing it can be 500 millimeter, 600 millimeter, 800 millimeter, 1000 millimeter depending on what is the type of the size of the vessel right. So this is just a kind of a thumb rule that it is every third or fourth frame space. The classification society rules they prescribe what would be the minimum spacing right. So what are these plate floor or bracket floor what are the difference which one is referred to as plate floor and which one is bracket floor. The one which we have shown here this is actual example of a plate floor right. There is a plate floor or a also referred to as solid floor that means you have a full plate there though it has several openings for some purpose but other is a full plate. If the floor is of this type I am once again drawing another say midship view and only highlighting the double bottom position right. So here if I in some cases it is only like this obviously the drawing is not to scale right only it has been enlarged too much on the vertical and not that much in the breadth. This green outline whatever I am drawing is the is your bracket floor will look like this sorry here also you will have a small cut out. So this is a case of bracket floor right here your if the doll bottom is longitudinally stiffened then your stiffening members would be like this bottom shell is longitudinally stiffened inner bottom plating is also longitudinally stiffened right and at the end here you have a continuous plate running which is referred to as center girder center girder or also referred to as center kilson center kilson a vertical plate right so, what is the difference between this plate floor and a bracket floor? This is a case of a bracket floor. And this is a plate floor. That means what has happened is as if these two the of the entire plate floor only the two ends I have kept rest of the plate I have removed is not it. It is nothing but as if as if only this part and this part is there rest of the plate is not there it is empty. That means only two brackets have remained at both the ends. So that is why this arrangement is referred to as bracket floor arrangement bracket floor and this is a plate floor obviously in case of a bracket floor you can see the strength of this is less the rigidity is less here rigidity is much more 
Now, since more rigidity is needed in engine room to support all kinds of uh, concentrated load, so engine room it is recommended that all the floors are plate floors, right? Whereas in the cargo hold, every third or fourth frame location I can give a plate floor, rest all are bracket floor, right? Well, now if we come to this, the details of this, these openings we have talked about, they are the scallops such that it facilitates welding of the inner bottom plating and the center girder, right? Here it facilitates the welding of the side shell and the inner bottom plating, okay? And these openings, this circle I have drawn, they are basically an opening. Generally, they are of, generally, not necessarily, such openings are 300 phi, means diameter is 300 millimeter, right? They are referred to as lightening holes. Means it has no other function, it just lightens the st structure. If you cut out from the middle portion, it does not affect much on the strength because the material near the neutral axis is being removed. So, in fact, strength to weight ratio improves. <coughs> that is the idea, right? That is why these holes in this. Why these holes? Here, what I have tried to show is that this, okay, 305, but this I tried to show little bigger, elongated. What is the purpose of these holes? Also same thing, lightening hole, that is number one. But why bigger ones? Because it will also provide human access. Because you see, in the, this particular space is referred to as double bottom space. Now, this double bottom space will be used for, it is not used for carriage of cargo, but it is used for carriage of fuel oil, fresh water for ballasting purpose, right? For these purposes, this is, these spaces are used. And you will have to have accessibility to, to all spaces for reasons of, well, to inspect whether everything is all right, because if anything goes wrong inside, the ship's uh, security is at stake. I mean, there can be a structural failure getting initiated from there. That is one way. That means every place should be accessible to for inspection, not only from structural integrity point of view, but also from other requirements like whether you are carrying any contraband goods there concealed. So in the border customs, people may check it, right? So accessibility is there. Now it's a heavily structured heavily, so to say, this door bottom space, as you can see, there are various, this inner bottom longitudinals, bottom longitudinals, then the floor will come at every frame space, spacing between the floor could be, say, 800 millimeter. So, it is a quite a uh, clumsy area, quite a structured place. So, there, if you, you will have to, a person should be able to, that person can be inspector, can be a surveyor, can be a welder, right? He should be able to move through the double bottom space inside. So that is why you will have to have access through these floors. So these openings, they will serve the purpose of lightening the floor as well as access through that. And thirdly, as I have said that this space could be used for say this entire space, right? Could be used for suppose Ah, you want to carry fresh water there because when the ship will be sailing, you need to have fresh water with you because you do not get that at sea, right? So, this space can be used for fresh water, for example. So, that, that entire doll bottom space acts as a tank. So, there should be these holes there, will, I mean, serve the purpose of the fluid to flow naturally and normally, right? So that is how these openings, these openings generally they are of the size of 300 by 600 millimeter, 
there's sufficiently big openings so that a person can squeeze himself through those openings. It can be 400 by 600, depending again on the depth of the double bottom, because this is what is the depth of double bottom that is also prescribed that it should be minimum this much, depending on the size of the vessel, because this constitutes the backbone of the ship, you can say, right. And here in this, uh, uh, the, the angle, the stiffness are there and this red line that is nothing but a cutout through which the stiffness are passing through, all right. The stiffness are passing, cutouts in the floors, cutouts in the floors. So a floor, if I want to see, right, bracket floor like this. So the bracket floor is nothing but two pieces of plates. Said th this side bracket floor I am drawing. So it is nothing but say one plate like this, which is having a flanged end. So this is actually this particular. So this is a plate, right? Similarly, when I see a plate floor, it would be. like this it will go it may look somewhat like this that means from a flat piece of plate this will be cut out, this is my plate floor, right, this is a piece of plate. This drawing will be there already, so based on the drawing using a flame cutting machine, numerical control flame cutting machine will cut out the plate. So you have the floor ready, right. So. Now, if we again go back to that drawing and we see, well, here I have drawn some these green dotted lines. What are those lines? Some lines are drawn here. They are actually the, they are called struts. These green lines, they are referred to as strut. They are nothing but stiffeners, flat plate stiffeners connecting the inner bottom longitudinal to the bottom longitudinal, right. So that is basically a stiffener is welded here, right. If I take a section, it is nothing but you have the floor plate and a another flat plate welded. This is my strut. This is a flat bar stiffener. Flat bar stiffener, right? Say say like this 75 by 10 flat bar stiffener. Why these stiffeners? What are the function of these uh, so called struts? They are, they have a typical name like you have inner bottom longitudinal, bottom longitudinal, side shell frame, twin frame, deck longitudinal, they are all stiffener, right? Having depending on the location, depending on the reuse, we have assigned a name. So this is also a stiffener. Here the requirement, sectional modulus requirement is less, so I am giving strut, a flat bar, flat bar stiffener. If it becomes more, I will make a bulb section or angle section, whatever. Here we understand why these stiffening, all these things have been done, because the loads are coming, it have to sustain the load. What are the function of this vertical stiffener? Again, the same thing. The, here you have 
the load coming in like this, isn't it? On the tank top, this is the load of the cargo, cargo load, and in the from the bottom you have the buoyancy force acting. So you can see the floor plating is directly under compression, right? Directly under compression, and if this double bottom height, the depth goes on increasing, goes on increasing means well for a big ship it may be 2 meters. So you imagine a 2 meter plate if it is under in plane compression if it does not have enough section modulus it will buckle, it will buckle right that is why these stiffeners, this vertical stiffeners which are referred to as strut. So they provide stiffness to the floor. So you the floor is one of the is that of providing strength in the transverse plane. We have talked about longitudinal strength, transverse strength, local strength, etc. So, floor being a transverse member, it provides strength in the transverse plane. That means it provides for transverse strength of the structure. Now, if it itself does not have the uh, necessary strength, what support it will provide? That is what it is. That means that is why this struts are welded, which stiffen the structure, which stiffen the floor itself. Then the floor in turn provides transfer strength, right? So that is how. So this is a uh, floor. Uh, I mean schematic of the floor arrangement in case of uh, longitudinally framed. Uh, system in case of longitudinally framed system, right? Well, maybe little bit of this detail we can see how this looks like. I mean, what is this particular detail? The intersection, if we look into the intersection, this is a part of the inner bottom plating, right? You have the inner bottom longitudinal and then let us draw the floor plate. The actual detail looks something like this. The floor plate will come that U type of cutout what we have shown. In reality, the cut out is of this fashion. Right? This is my fl floor. Right? The top line is the tank top or inner bottom plating. This is my tank top, tank top longitudinal, right. So, how the connections are? The floor is welded to the inner bottom plating, right. This is welded here. In addition to that, we provide a additional piece of plate like this, which is also welded. So what has been done? So this is the joint detail. All these joints, all these, right, the detail is like this. So what is the other purpose of the floor? Well, maybe if, if you see this, say I am drawing the plan view of the tank top. This is my tank top, tank top plating. Plan view of tank top means, can you understand? This plate, this plate, if I look from top, how it will look like that particular water line. 
at the tank top level. Now, I have drawn tank top having what you call your longitudinal framing system. Let us assume that our uh, transverse, uh, the <coughs> floors are here, the bulkheads are, I mean the watertight floors. This is my watertight floors, that means they are nothing but the bulkhead locations, right? Okay. And also, let us assume that this is my plate floor. I am only drawing one per hold. There will be many, definitely. Okay. Rest are all your uh, uh, bracket floors, right? So now, the stiffeners, let us, stiffeners means the inner bottom longitudinals, they will come like this. Now, how do we calculate for the section modulus of this inner bottom longitudinals? So, inner bottom longitudinals will come like this, the red ones, okay. <coughs> how do we get the section modulus of this inner bottom longitudinal say suppose same thing is true for deck longitudinal for twin deck longitudinal for anywhere they are that means what is the function of this that means they are supposed to sustain the load sustain the load that means that means what if i take a part of the inner bottom longitudinal any part this much or this much or this much whatever, if you see what it is in a simplified version, simplified form, <coughs> it is either this, right, or it is a case of this depending on which part of the longitudinal I am taking, which are the end connections I am considering, it is either, either a simply supported beam type of thing or a end clamped type of thing, whatever, right. <coughs> and what is the effect? Effect is it will be subjected to a, a deflection, it will be subjected to a bending moment, basically causing deflection. So essentially we are bothered about the bending moment. Right. So, how much bending moment? Instead of going exactly how much, let us see what it is. Because if I ask you how much, you will immediately try to recall the formula. Instead of thinking about the formula, think what happens. Why the bending moment? When it will be more? When it will be less? So, what it is directly related to? Tell me. In this situation. M is a function of length, span, first and foremost, and obviously function function of the load. That W is a uniformly distributed load or a constant load, whatever. These two, and also the end fixities, right? So for the timing, if I just take, it is essentially a, it is proportional to L, it is not actually L, L squared in this case, is not it? It is a function of L, how that functionality relation, it is to the square, proportional to the squared, right. So now, our case is W is fixed. That means we cannot play with W. Why? Because the customer owner has told that I have to carry 10,000 tons of wheat. Accordingly, I have designed a shift. So that fixes my W. That means, what I mean to say is, that means load is, is, is given to you. So much loading will come. So designer will have to arrange a structure or device a structure which will be able to sustain that load. So in our formulations W is fixed, only variable is L. If I 
minimize, uh, make the span less or my bending moment becomes if I reduces, if I can reduce L, my M reduces. If M reduces, what does it mean? If M reduces for the same working stress level, your section modulus reduces, isn't it? Your Z reduces. Because again, working stress is fixed. What is that working stress? Working stress is nothing but the permissible stress. That means somebody has told you that you cannot go beyond this stress level. That means there would be some st statutory requirement based on certain kind of factor of safety. Because as far as say mild steel is concerned, normal strength steel, what is the yield point? Sigma y, any idea? Normal strength steel means the steel which is not specially hardened or specially toughened or anything. Normal strength steel, low carbon, normal strength steel. It is of the order of, uh -huh, tell me. 10 to the power 11 into 2.8. Oh my God, what is that? That is some number you have said. Tell me the units. I am going in meter square. Anyway, let us see whether uh, you, what, what I am writing that matches you. It is around 210 to say 230 newtons per millimeter square, right? 210 to 230 newtons per millimeter square. That means if the load is uh, for a given span, for a given load, the stress comes to this range, it will start yielding. It will not fail, it may yield, some permanent deformation take, may take place, but depending on the design requirement, we may or may not allow this. In, in most of the cases, we do not allow the structure to reach to the yield point. So, we generally have a factor of safety, right? Uh, very generally speaking, the working stress level used for normal strength steel in ship building is around 100 newtons per millimeter square. That means roughly 2 is taken as factor of safety, right? Anyway, so we'll so this is fixed. I can I'll have to design a structure wherein sigma w should not exceed 100, right? So that is fixed. W is fixed. So what I do? I choose a suitable L such that my z is less. Or in other words, if I reduce the span, my section modulus will be less. What does that mean? My weight of the structure will be less, right, for the same strength. So that is what it is. When we calculate the section modulus for, say, this longitudinal, if this longitudinal I want, I will have to simplify it and model it. So how do I take? What is the span of this particular longitudinal? which distance I take the span, this full length or only this much, only this much, right? Yeah, that means because here I have said this is my plate floor. And this is my bulkhead, right? In between I had bracket floors. These green lines are bracket floors, right? And you have seen that in the bracket floor configuration, your longitudinals are so-called left at large. That means they are not supported, nothing. But in case of a plate floor, you see the kind of support. It is not only on this side it is welded, on the other side again you put a additional small piece of plate, right, and additionally weld it. That means give a proper support, come to a closer 
situation like this, come to a situation closer to this, end fixed, right? The end is fixed means it can sustain more load, more bending moment. Okay, so this is this particular plate is referred to as collar plate. So that is how are the your so called end connections or or the supports that means what you see here is the structural members when you have this is a longitudinal framing system in the longitudinal framing system primary structures are the longitudinals which are supported by the transverse structures this longitudinal is running along the length in the transverse plane at intervals there are floors or transverses in deck there will be transverses right so they they will provide the support thereby the span will be less and your scantlings will be less right okay so this uh, so that is what is the floor well in case of uh, watertight floor we have talked about the bracket floor and this is uh, a plate floor in case of watertight floor, well, what will happen? These holes will not be there, simple, right, obviously. And what about these openings? These openings are needed for fabrication because the sequence of fabrication is you have the plate, you put the stiffeners and then bring and fit the floor. That is why these big openings are cut such that it fits in nicely and easily over the frame, you just put it, the frame is there like this, you put the floor, it will fit in, in that cutout. Right? Now in case of watertight floor, this same detail will become what? These collar plates will be much bigger, in three pieces you will put one on this side, another on this side and this, just to seal it off, essentially it is sealing off. Maybe. We can, we can see one sketch, it was like this, the floor, now you provide, these are all welded obviously, okay, and then what you do is, here it is welded, right. Now you will have to literally cut a plate of this fashion, so three pieces of plates, it may not be very nicely visible. three pieces of plates in this fashion, are welded, means essentially a blanking of that hole, that opening was cut to accommodate the longitudinal, they have to blank it off. And other those openings of access, etc. are not there, because you are not supposed to cross from one uh, watertight compartment to the other watertight compartment through that because you make an opening you cannot keep it watertight. So other openings are not there at all, okay. So that is what. There are of course uh, uh, some more uh, maybe since we are talking. Uh, here you have small, small, small openings also. both at the bottom and at the top, these small openings are, the top ones are the air holes, bottom ones are the drain holes, right, such details are also there, air hole and drain hole, anyway, so that is what are the floors, then let us come to the bulkhead, 
Well, as far as bulkheads are concerned, as I have said, there are three types, primarily two types of bulkheads. One is transverse subdivision watertight bulkhead, which subdivides the ship in watertight compartments, right? And there is a non watertight bulkhead. What are those non watertight bulkheads? They are generally the bulkheads in the accommodation region referred to as accommodation bulkhead. There are bulkheads in some other region which are referred to as wash bulkhead. That is how they are named wash bulkhead. It is nothing but providing strength, right. So, transverse and there can be another type that is longitudinal bulkhead. longitudinal bulkhead. This longitudinal bulkhead comes in case of oil tankers, where you have oil tanker, a oil tanker section, I mean we are not going in the other structural details, just the outline section. oil tanker will have additional longitudinal bulkheads. So, what, what it is doing this longitudinal bulkheads? Till now we have seen, we have talked about, till now we have talked about transverse subdivision bulkheads, thereby we are subdividing the ship in several watertight compartments. That is what we have done. There is the transverse subdivision watertight bulkheads. These are longitudinal bulkheads subdividing the vessel longitudinally, sorry I mean in the transverse plane in three watertight compartments. These are longitudinal bulkhead, right. The purpose is to subdivide the along the length in different watertight compartments. If I have central one, then two compartment, two port and starboard, we have three compartments, right. For a specific reason this is done. Well, so again going back to this, we have uh, transverse bulkhead uh, that is watertight, other ones are non watertight. There is a fundamental difference there, one is watertight, one is non watertight. Wash bulkheads, I mean that is just a name. They are also a kind of non watertight bulkhead, like the bulkheads used in accommodation region. Accommodation region means the cabins, the walls of the cabins, they are also referred to as bulkhead. They need not be watertight, they are not, they are not for subdividing the vessel, they need not be watertight, right. Similarly, wash bulkheads, what happens is in the forward part of the ship. This is the forward part. This is my forward peak bulkhead. The forward peak bulkhead, that means the foremost bulkhead, right, which is referred to as forward peak bulkhead or uh, forward collision bulkhead. It is either referred to as four peak bulkhead or forward collision bulkhead, right. This nose, the nose of the vessel as if, right, this part, it is heavily strengthened. It is generally heavily strengthened. It has its several deck strengthening features, right, additional girders here. See here we are putting T girders, no problem it can be put T, not necessarily T, it can be angle, whatever, depending on the strength requirement. These are referred to as stringers. This will run along the side. That means if I draw the section.
the stringers are nothing but I mean stiffener running like this. In, 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 in different plane, this is the plane view we have drawn, right? All along the, it's a, it's a stringers are nothing but stiffeners along the side shell, in the horizontal plane, in the horizontal plane. They are longitudinal members, but they are in the horizontal plane. So stringers. Then here you will have floors. Right. Then here, you have some compartment you can have here, which is generally chain locker. Chain locker means on the deck you have the anchor windlass, anchor handling machine, right? Anchor handling winch, which is called as anchor windlass, you haul up the anchor, then where does the chain go? Chain also is a huge chain. So that chain goes right in inside the hull. There is a space meant for it, chain locker, there the chain drops in inside. So it has to be properly stiff and strengthened, etc. And then also here what one can have is or like a additional Central line bulkhead this vertical lines I am drawing they are the stiffener for the central line bulkhead right there can be such openings in the bulkhead these openings are nothing but for keeping the structure lighter. This particular central line bulkhead right, is referred to as wash bulkhead. It is in this central line bulkhead means I am provided here wash bulkhead. At the center of the four peak, this region is referred to as four peak, also referred to as four end construction. This arrangement, four end construction, it is a typical I have shown. There can be many other arrangements of stiffening arrangements. Why this is important? Where from the load is coming here? Why I have yes. providing a central line bulkhead also? I mean, basically, what central line bulkhead means? What it is a heavily stiffened plate. Well, it has some openings. I have tried to make it lighter because I do not need watertight compartments divided. The whole point is here I am providing additional stringers right, in the side shell which in other cargo area or other places it is not there. Why? How come the load is more here? Because it is one is waves. Uh, waves means waves. You see, it, it's not truly waves because waves the ship generate. In a calm sea, when it moves, it generates the waves, right? In a in a in a turbulent sea, okay, water can come and hit. Worst is, in a turbulent sea, it will start executing motions. So the slamming effect. Primarily, the slamming effect. It hits the water surface. So, huge loading may come, right? And next point is in the event of collision, in the event of collision, that is why it is called forward collision bulkhead. In the event of collision, head on collision, it should be able to take the entire shock, but up to the bulkhead means this entire thing may collapse, but nothing will happen beyond that it will crumble, but the entire ship will remain safe. That means this nose may get battered, you know, 
but you are safe. That is how. That is why it is called forward collision bulkhead. And uh, that is why that uh, all that story of Titanic would not have been there had the captain not changed his course. You know how, how Titanic sank? How? from the side, it hit iceberg from the side and if it hits iceberg from the side, what happened? This plate got torn off almost, almost uh, I mean several compartments got torn off. Had it been only one compartment or two compartments, nothing would have had happened. Several compartments, the shell got torn off. So simultaneously the water ingress was there in all the holes right and obviously it sank because the captain uh, could see some iceberg so well without uh, out of panic or whatever decision was to avoid that without realizing iceberg you cannot avoid because you only see that tip that is only probably 10 percent or even less you see the compared the density you can make out the huge amount is below so if you see a small berg and you think, okay, I'll just graze past. No, you don't do that because the huge one is below and that's what happened. Instead, if you would have gone and rammed head on, this would have had got collapsed. If not, okay, the next compartment also, nothing would have had happened. It would have floated safely because ships are built. That is how these subdivisions are done such that your ship will remain safe in the event of adjacent compartments getting flooded. Means suppose this compartment and this compartment gets flooded, two, compa two adjacent compartments getting flooded means they are not no more contributing any buoyancy. Still the ship remains afloat, then we call it two compartment standard. If three adjacent compartment gets flooded, still it is safely floating. Safely floating also has a definition that that that, that means the deck should not go under water, right? So we call it three compartment standard. So those are determined by the arrangement of this subdivision watertight bulkheads, how the watertight bulkheads are deployed, how closely or how wider spaced. So that way we see that these bulkheads had functions, certain very important functions. What are they? One is to subdivide the vessel, subdivide the vessel in several watertight compartments because depending on that in how many watertight compartments I am subdividing. It will be either one compartment standard or two compartment standard or three compartment standard and so on, right? So that is from the flooding point of view, right? From the damage stability point of view. Number two is they provide strength. Which strength? Transverse strength because it is a purely a transverse member, transverse strength. Third. It should be such, so designed the bulkheads should be able to confine fire in the event of fire in any hold, the fire will remain confined there. So that is also a function, important function of a bulkhead. So these are the things that means they should be able, to, they, they subdivide the hull in several watertight compartments, not only compartment, watertight compartment. They provide transfer strength to the structure. Transfer strength means what? That means that raking phenomena, strength against raking, right, will not take place. They will be able to confine fire. In the event of fire, it will uh, provide sort of, uh, it will confine the fire. And lastly, one can say that it provides support for any uh, debt machinery, support for deck machinery wherever applicable. What is that like in case of a cargo ship, a bulk carrier 
like you can have a say the cranes deck crane right you have to provide a crane there so that's a heavy machinery on the deck so that is fitted just above the transverse watertight bulkheads because the bulkhead being a itself a strong heavy structure it will provide the necessary support for the relevant deck machinery what is there on top right like for example the deck cranes so in next class we'll look into the uh, how these bulkheads are made of I have uh, we have through these cases we'll see that they will be vertically stiffened or horizontally stiffened or corrugated bulkhead that means this bulkheads can be this watertight bulkheads or even non watertight bulkheads they can be either stiffened flat plate stiffened bulkhead <coughs> or corrugated bulkhead okay <coughs>